one of the essential spiritual lessons that we all need to learn is that everything of this world is temporary. Everything that we put our trust in, everything that we rely on, everything that we look to of this world will pass away, that can be taken from us. Not only can it be taken from us, but it will be. Everything. There is nothing of this world that we can put our eternal trust in. Everything we cling to of the world for security, whether it be good or bad, will fail us, will crumble. No matter how hard we cling to it, we will lose it. The essential spiritual lesson for every one of us is that only God is permanent. Only God can offer us security that will not fail. Only God is the one that gives us eternal security. There is a reality also beyond the things of this life which God continuously warns us of. Not just in words, but through experience. The Fathers tell us that at death, the soul that is accustomed to satisfying itself with the things of this world, the soul that clings to the things of this world, the soul that feeds its passions of the flesh and of the world, will continue in this state after death, but at death all these things will be taken away. We will lose everything that satisfies us in this way. And the soul will find itself in a horrific, a terrible condition, craving, yearning to satisfy itself with these things that it no longer has access to. The worldly things will pass away and that soul will be in torment, a self-created torment. It is a frightful condition. Not only the fathers, but God himself continuously tries to warn us of these things. The longer we feed the passions, the longer we allow ourselves to dwell completely on the things of this world, the harder we are making it for ourselves. Not only in this life to repent and to uproot these things from ourselves, but the harder we are making it for ourselves when we die. We must think eternally. We must think of what is coming. Let us think of a patient in hospital. If there is hope for the patient, if the doctor believes that he can cure the patient, the doctor will prescribe a steady, healthy diet. The doctor will say, these medicines may be bitter, but you must live this way to get better. The patient for whom the doctor has no hope, the doctor will say, well, he only has so long to live, let him eat what he wants. Let him satisfy himself. Let him eat all the sweet things that his heart craves. And so it is in the world. God, when there is hope for us, gives us struggles, gives us pains. God continuously warns us that these things will pass away. He shakes us. God shakes us through struggle, through pain, through through failure. God continuously shows us the temporary nature of the things of this world and of this life. Like the doctor who sends sometimes difficult prescriptions, God seeks to heal us of our reliance and our trust in the things of this world. And sometimes we are so stubborn, sometimes we turn our back to us to such a degree that it takes something catastrophic to truly awaken us, to shake us from the complacency that this world would give us. But this is God's love, this is God's mercy, this is God's compassion for us, demonstrating himself, calling us back to, to sense, to reality, that we must let go of the world. Because sometimes that can be a painful experience, letting go pulling out the hooks from the heart that the world has caught us with. 
and all of us, all of us, our hearts are hooked in some way, each of us. God shakes us, he humbles us through suffering, through struggle and through failure. We only have to look at life itself, how old age creeps upon us and those who are ahead of us say to us, my life has gone so quickly, like the blink of an eye. The brevity of life is so clear to those in old age. They warn us of this and yet few of us listen, especially when we are younger and we feel we have life stretching out before us, we have so many years and yet those years pass so quickly. Death races towards every one of us, unseen. Hurtles, every moment getting closer. And the wisdom of old age is that people see this, they recognize the brevity of life. Who amongst us? If we were traveling to some far off place and a traveler came to us who had been there before us and said, you must wear this, you must wrap up warm, you must take these things, we would not listen. Of course we would. We would trust their experience. And yet when it comes to the aged, so few of us are able to listen to their wisdom when they tell us, look, repent now, this life will pass. Put not your trust in these things of the world. They are an irrelevance. They are worse. They are an attachment that will bring you sorrow. The fathers say to us, every worldly attachment is a potential source of sorrow in our lives all the things that we deliberately attach ourselves to are potentially a source of suffering, a source of grief. So each of us must look carefully at our hearts, must call ourselves to account and say, what am I truly longing for? What am I truly desiring? What am I allowing to hook itself into my heart? And more so, what do I desire for my children? What am I bringing my children up to, to long for, to crave, to, to seek in life? What am I applauding and celebrating in my children's achievements? Is it all worldly things? Or am I encouraging my children to recognize the fleeting nature of the things of this world, the things that God continuously warns us about through these difficult experiences, trying to shake us out of this complacency? We must recognize that time, that moment of death is coming. It is approaching each of us so quickly. We must prepare for that moment by letting go, letting go of these worldly attachments. The time for this change, the time to address this false security in our lives is now. This is the time that God has given us to pull out these hooks. This is the time when God is saying, listen to the warnings I've given you through the scriptures, through the prophets, through the saints and the holy fathers, through my son himself. And if we are deaf to all these teachings, then God will say, in my mercy, I will shake you. I will shake you. It will be painful. And if you do not become resentful, if we do not turn angry towards God and say, why me, Lord, why me? But are able to see what God is doing in those moments. And are wise enough to find enough discernment to recognize God's hand on us. And that it is his love and mercy that is bringing us through these painful experiences. Then we may learn from them. While we suffer, while we struggle, let us remember we still have hope. If we're going through a particular period of our life where things are easy, we mustn't fall into the trap of imagining that suddenly there is no hope, of course. Sometimes God will give us a rest. Sometimes there are periods where God knows our weakness and sees that we need to recover from what has gone before. He doesn't overburden us. He doesn't give us more than we can cope with. We need to trust in him. Trust that he knows us better than ourselves. 
believe that there's time to change is now because every one of us must face the consequences of how we have lived this life we will face the consequences in terms of how we mould and shape our soul here and now but we will also face the consequences eternally 